Thank you very much for staying with us on The Breakfast. Welcome back once again. Of course, uh, we move on to other stories that we're sharing this morning on The Breakfast. The Northern Governors Forum have expressed their support for the federal government's move to regulate social media. The governor said it will help curb the spread of fake news in the country. In a communique issued by its chairman and governor of Plateau State, Simon Lalong, the forum called for major control mechanisms and censorship of social media practice in Nigeria. It also expressed support for the reform of the police to strengthen their capacity. Joining us to share his uh, thoughts on this is uh, Babashola Kuti, a digital consultant and media premier. Thank you so much for stepping in and for joining us. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. All right. Uh, let's uh, start off with uh, your assessment of this never-ending conversation to curb social media. Um, I think, you know, when I hear these kind of things, I'm a bit confused. I mean, uh, as, you know... Um, and first of all, is, is it a priority for us right now? Uh, and the second thing is that how does government regulate social media? We're not China or, or North Korea. So, you know, for me, I just find it all, you know, rather, you know, I'm curious about, about it and wondering what exactly they want to achieve. Um, you also remember that, you know, um, the whole idea of curbing social media is like basically uh, taking away the freedom of speech. Um, the media already, I know, is under a lot of pressure in Nigeria. And social media has proven to be a platform that everyone can express themselves freely on it, wherever they are, you know, regardless of... If, so if a story... For instance, the NSA story, when it started, it didn't get media coverage, but social media was what drove uh, the awareness. And I think, you know, for anyone to sit down in 2020 and say they want to regulate social media... It's just, for me, it's, it's just nonsense, you know. I mean, I'm not going to paint any picture for anyone. There's a, there's a narrative that the government seems to be scared of uh, the level of enlightenment and education and information that, you know, Nigerians across the country are able to get off social media. And um, that might be one of the reasons why they need it uh, to be controlled. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? I think that is actually, for me, that's what I'd actually say, that the government doesn't like the fact that when it goes to a place and shoots up its, its citizens, uh, it's spread on social media because they've already controlled the traditional media. So, for instance, you can't show those kind of footages on TV. However, social media is still driving a lot of traffic to and highlighting government failures uh, without restriction. So what the government is trying to do essentially is try to, to silence the people from expressing their views. I think it's totally wrong. I also think that I don't know why the Northern gov Governors are meeting to discuss this in the presence of the, com uh, the Minister of Communications. Uh, I also heard that the Chief of Staff to the President was there and some other active players in the presidency. I just think that this, for me, for a country that has the highest out-of-school children, 13 million, for a country that has the, is, is the poverty capital of the world, and, and the, the poverty region is, is actually the north. I mean, I'd like to see the northern region, uh, northern region actually discuss something that affects them. I mean, just imagine how this sounds, that in the, in the heat of the Boko Haram, when the, we had a southern president, imagine some southern governor sitting down and talking about trying to keep northerners out of, of, of or, or, or close down social media because... They don't want people in the north to talk about the attacks that are going on. I mean, it's just, for me, it's just total, you know, a total waste of time. So, so you don't agree? The government doesn't have its priorities right. Um, Shola Kuti, so you don't agree with the, the narrative that um, the spread of fake news might become um, a, a, a bigger problem for Nigeria if it is not controlled? Look, I, 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 I've said this many times that I agree that you know, the regulation should be made for people who, you know, peddle fake news. I, I agree that. But these things have already been taken care of, in, in, to the best of my knowledge. I mean, there the, are the laws already existing to handle people who libel, who peddle fake news. So the point I'm making is that why, why is this social media that is actually the problem? You know, people can, can talk about anything they want. I mean, and to, to think that the insult is that it's, it's this same government that wants to Ban fake news. This government wrote to power on, on, on the back of fake news. 
Lal Mohammed was a fake news propagator. Even in government, I remember him say, talking about money, recovered monies, telling all sorts of lies. Nasir El Rufai, who is another governor, who was at that meeting, was writing all sorts of rubbish about President Jonathan in those days on social media. I mean, so the one point I'm making is that it's either there's something else that they're not telling us, you know, but I, I just think that this, this entire thing should never be a discussion for any nation. It, not in 2020, seriously. All right, let's, let's talk about, um, uh, I mean, in spite of the support from Norton leaders uh, for the social media, um, uh, regulation of social media, we know that this is not the first time the conversation is coming up. Um, Lai Mohammed, for instance, has been at it, and he said it himself, he's been at it since 2017. He pushed for it 2018. We know that in the previous um, eight assembly efforts to bring a bill was shot down after a lot of uproar. Um, some, I uh, asked this question of a previous guest um, two days ago, and, and I'm, I'm, I want to get your unique perspective on it. Is it all blustering on the part of the government just to, uh, you know, create create conversation and a distraction from other issues you alluded to earlier? Or will he, the, gov the Minister of Information and the government, succeed this time around with their push to regulate social media? I think, you see, the question you must ask yourself, when someone says, I want to regulate social media, how can you regulate something that you don't own? I mean, first of all, if these people are not from the 12th century, they would know that. Social media has already been regulated by the owners of social media based on other government policies from other countries. So, for instance, even the president of the United States gets some of his tweets removed from, from Facebook if it's found to be fake news. If you post something on, on Facebook or Twitter today that is misleading, Facebook has an entire team of thousands of people dedicated to, to weeding those things off. off, the, off. So when they say they want to regulate social media, what do they mean? Do they want to buy shares in the company and then decide what goes on it and what doesn't go up? Or do they want to close it down for the Nigerian space? Either way, I still think that they, they, they themselves don't know. All they want to do is basically say they, they don't want social media in Nigeria. That is the way I see it. Because this word regulation, what does that mean? Do they have access to the Facebook um, tool to be able to stop somebody from posting something? They don't. So... The problem is, if somebody posts fake news, there, there is a way you can actually report that, that particular item and social media will pull it down and Facebook or Twitter will pull it down. So for people to come and tell me in 2020 they want to regulate something they do not own, this is not like Nigerian airwaves or, or some satellite signal. So basically what they're saying is that they want to be able to shut down social media at certain times when people are talking about issues. You know, for instance, if somebody is talking about NSAS, they want to, at that point, close the space so nobody can, nobody's voice can be heard. I, I think that is totally unacceptable. Um, Babajo Lakuti, uh, do, do you also, um, well, two things I want to throw at you. Have you seen um, from your own you know, perspective certain ways that social media has also um, you know, become a threat? Because I'm really trying to see things from the perspective of the Northern governors here. <laughs> Um, I want to see or uh, understand, you know, what, you know, makes this so much of a big concern to them. So have you also been able to see certain ways that social media has uh, become such a scary thing for the Nigerian, um, well, for Nigeria itself, that it needs immediate regulation and control? If you listen to the Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, a statement that he made was they need to get to a point, point where they have the authority to immediately shut down certain platforms if necessary. Um, um, that is um, uh, one. And then second, what do you think the reaction would be from you know, the young Nigerians and Nigerians in general if the Nigerian government is successful with this uh, type of regulation they speak of? Uh, look, I think that, honestly, you and I know that um, bad news travels fast, right? You know... Like I said, I, when, when in the heat of the social media bill, I, I was one of those people that was saying that, look, we've got to also be careful what we put out there. And I agree totally that some stories can be, you know, devastating. There's so many stories that can create, like, ethnic tensions and all of that. But those things do not just exist on social media. They exist on the radio. You know, on, on some of the radios in northern Nigeria, they exist in the mosques. Would they then say that because of that, they want to go and shut the mosque down? 
they exist in some churches where people are preaching hate. Anywhere there's a gathering of people, there's a possibility that you know bad fake news will be peddled. So the point is that does the government want to now do what we did in our bachelor days of sending spies to be in every location so anybody that talks bad about government will be arrested? I mean, look, and you know, I just think that it's I, I honestly I don't believe that we're discussing this as a government in the present crisis. We've got COVID nineteen. We've got the NSAS crisis that just been, people have just been killed. You know, we're not talking about taking guns off the streets and, uh, and getting the police to be at where we're having a meeting of, of 19 governors and, and members of the president talking about social media. Like, it, it just shows that this government doesn't want to do their work. And the only way they think they can escape it is by, you know, keeping people quiet. You know, I mean, what next? Are they going to throw everybody in the gallows? I mean, it's... For me, it's, and I think that the, the, your second question that the young people will resist it definitely, but um, I, I expect that this, this kind of bill would not pass nationally. The only thing I wanted to add is that don't think that it's only the northern governors that don't like social media. All governors in Nigeria do not like social media for what it represents because social media has the ability to be able to pinpoint you know, certain actions to a location at a particular time and show evidence. So a lot of governors have arrested, even some PDP governors have arrested people for putting information out on social media. So right. the, the point is that it, it, it's, it's a threat to all, all gov governments across the world. Mr. Kuti, let's, let's look at it from a different perspective, a, a solution perspective. Instead of social media to pose a threat to governors and leaders and they're continually worried about how they can control it, what would you suggest would be a better way for the government to go about making use of social media? Um, in, in this sense, how should they be making use of social media to amplify what they are doing as against being so focused on, uh, you know, curbing it? Yeah, I, I agree with you totally that, um, you know, if I was a government advisor, I'd say to them, you know what, this is what we call the heartbeat of the nation. This is where you can feel the pulse of the people. Um, so I, I would say this is how you measure how well you're performing. You know, um, in the old days, you know, we would say that there was no voice for the people. There was no way for government to measure certain things. You can do social media has proven the, the government people themselves have all of them have um, social profiles, you know, and they use it to send news out. So, you know, how do we regulate what they send as well to say, when, they, when, when the government said they, they, they um, shared money and food to millions of Nigerians, how do we not tag that as fake news? You know, little things like that. The problem is that it isn't something that should be discussed at, at any level in any government. Social media is here to stay, and it, it should be so. But I'm really worried about the, the Ninth Assembly. I think the Ninth Assembly has proven itself to be in bed with the government rather than to be, uh, you know, a, a check and balance mechanism. And, I, and I, I'm just worried that, you know, this kind of bill, if put be, before the Ninth Assembly, would pass. I think people should resist it and start resisting it from today. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Babashola Kuti, a digital consultant and media printer, for sharing your thoughts on the issue of social media and the quest to curb it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. I, I don't know. Um, each time this conversation about social media comes up, I just, um, I don't know what to feel or what to think. Because ordinarily, you would think that we have already self-checking mechanism. Yes, there um, are. We have people whose job is to fact check. We have Africa check. We have Google independent check. We have Twitter flagging. The platforms flagging. themselves The also. platforms um, themselves yeah, are yeah, flagging yeah. fake news. And as individual, even um, organizations, uh, television stations, radio, they put out jingles saying, verify before you share, whether it's on WhatsApp or, I mean, that, I think that enough that in itself is a check. I don't see there, what further check. There are also know. laws, you know, that are already, you know, in existence, you know, that help, you know, to also prosecute uh, for libel, for, you know, lies here and there, yeah. you know. So um, uh, this for me looks, you know, it looks, you know, from what a lot of the comments that I've seen, more like we need to control a platform that is giving people a voice. Um, and we need to be the only ones who have a voice. And so 
Um, you know, that's that's why this the, is so the much of a problem. The tricky part about this is when they keep talking about regulation, it they it, are not makes it seem like specific. A, yes, um, I, I, but you can, I think you can already tell where it's going. But it also I makes it honest, seem... To be honest, I can't. Because you know, if you were saying you want to regulate social media, in what way do you want to... Do you want to stop people from tweeting? Or do you want to stop people from going on Facebook or going on YouTube to post videos? What in specific terms? Twitter, are they talking Twitter, about when they talk about Twitter regulation? Twitter most likely is where the attention is going to be focused on, you know, because that is you know, the, the fastest and the biggest uh, means of communication. But another thing I, I want to ask is if you want to have that level of control over these things and you want to shut down these platforms, because I'm quoting the minister now, um, he was asking, you know, that they, they have the power to shut down certain platforms. I think he quickly changed his mouth when he knew that that but, thing but he I, said was, I, you know, I, I, out I of place. I want us to look at where we are in 2020. What are the types of... Uh, or means of media and communication does the Nigerian government want to use to assess its people? Is it print media? Is it radio? Is it the National Orientation Agency? Is it the town crier? What well, you it just said now triggered a thought. There are people, I think it was to, to Baba also, the popular singer, uh, that said something at the tail end of a video post that came to my head now. He talked about other people are coming up with their own technology. America, Google, you have Twitter, you have Instagram. Which did Nigeria come up with? Maybe if we're able to provide our own technology, our own kind of social, media, social media, then maybe you could be able to think about regulating might, might be a new it. name, a new platform, but it is still social media. Yeah. And you can't really control people's thoughts. You cannot really control people's emotions. I, I don't know if it was, it was you now or the guests that talked about uh, this is not North Korea, this is not China, we're regulation. They're able to do that because they have their own localized platforms. So somebody, it, 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 it seems far-fetched, it seems outrageous, but if we are so focused on regulating, there are other ways you can you know, explore. You could create your own unique platform and if Nigerians buy into it, then you can begin to think about, okay, I can shut it down. We know that um, I'm, I beg to be corrected or com, um, uh, contradicted that countries like China can decide to shut down social media and they can do that because they have the ability. But we don't. We are only uh, it's not, it's not just chopping about they from other the people. Ability. We're, we're in a democracy. We're totally different from China. And, and well, we cannot, I, I we cannot keep stealing that. or we cannot keep pointing towards countries like that when we have negative things um, to to you know to adopt yeah, why can't we that. point towards their health care their infrastructure why can't we point towards their respect for the you know the rights of their citizens and you know the zero um, well i don't know about their figures of police brutality but why can't we point towards those directions why would you always call up those countries when it's time to look at dictatorial tendencies and we say well china did it um, there are a lot of other things that you can look at, you know, Mama Gaddafi, you know, before he, he, he was killed. There are other things that you can look at. But when people want to, you know, call on Libya, they say, oh, it was... It, it you make a valid that. point. But let me just put a clog on the wheel again. Yeah, we talk we about know. the American democracy Absolutely. and then we hear about the electoral college system. And then you begin to wonder, is this truly a democracy? Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.